a long winter break, the Thundersport GB Championships are back and we're here at the world famous Brands Hatch for the first round of the championship. Now it might be a bit windy, but we are going to be focusing this year on the RST Clothing Golden Era Superbikes, the Sparklight Racing Golden Era Supersport and the JHS Racing Super Twins. Welcome to Thundersport Plus. Yes, so round one of the Thundersport GB Championships here from Brands Hatch in Kent. We will follow all nine rounds of the championship in 2013, featuring as with the classes that I just mentioned, and also not forgetting the Motodex pre-national Sport 600s as well. First racing action up here at Brands. It's quite drizzly, low temperature. I think it was about two or three in the air. Seven or eight degrees track temperature, but it's the JHS racing super twins, including Formula 400s here. So this is a class for the Aprilia 450s that you can see lining up on the grid there. That's Jamie Zachary on pole position. We will see little 400 motorcycles being ridden out there and 650, uh, Mini twins effectively. Pole position then, Jamie Thackeray, number 94, out there on an Aprilia 450. Second for Lewis Rollo, number eight. He's just 13 years old, last year's super team winner. Third place on the grid, good to have him on the front row. Alex Baker, number 22, on the BBR Racing Aprilia 450. And it's an Aprilia lockout on the front row because Ross Twyman, number 15, is there in fourth. On the second row, 111, Sam Smith is out there on a Kawasaki ZXR 400. Daniel Freer is out on a Kawasaki 650. Then it's Will Hodgson, number 14, and David Allingham, number 11, seventh and eighth, both on Aprilia's also. Look at the size of this grid. We're ready to go racing here at Brands Hatch. Keep an eye out that big gap there in second is because Lewis Rollo has not made it out onto the grid. He's had a little bit of a tumble. Hopefully he's all okay, but that's given an opportunity to Daniel Freer to to just slide through number 66 on the Kawasaki 650, that blue Kawasaki, so it's deceiving us a little bit. But as they come up towards Druids, it's Jamie Thackeray that is going to lead into the hairpin. Jamie Thackeray, ooh, a bit of a wobble on the exit there, quite slippery on the exit of Druids as they head down to Graham Hill Bend. Yeah, Jamie Thackeray, number 94, older brother of Luke Thackeray, also out in this field, number 95, both of them from York having raced with Thundersport since day one in the Aprilia Super Team class. Just behind Jamie, that's Will Hodgson, 26-year-old from Wigan. And then on the white Aprilia 450, still the same bike, but just different uh, livery, is number 11 there. Oh, and that's a great move from the Beemore Aprilia rider. David Allingham from Northern Ireland goes from third into first place and takes the lead. And that's Alex Baker now making a move from fourth up to second as well. And look at them, they're five abreast going into Paddock Hill Bend. So it's Allingham from Ross Twyman now. Then it is Alex Baker from Jamie Thackeray. And just behind Jamie Thackeray is the blue and yellow machine there of Daniel Freer. In fact, Daniel Freer just going up the inside of Jamie Thackeray. So Allingham leads on the Aprilia 450 in the white colours, number 11 on the Be More Aprilia, new sponsors for this weekend. A bit further back, that's uh, Thackeray Hodgson. And it looks well, we've got all sorts of riders in here. We've got that 400, you can see the Kawasaki 400 a little bit further back. Rob Garland, that looks like number 55, is out there on a Suzuki uh, Mini Twin. So Rob having some fun, a bit of a wobble again there from Jamie Thackeray, really struggling to find some grip on these opening laps. Uh, given the fact that he was in pole position, that might just be worrying his confidence a little bit. They come streaming out onto the start finish straight and it's Allingham on the Beemore Apilia that leads. Ross Twyman from Canterbury in second. Then it's Alex Baker, Dan Freer, Jamie Thackeray, Will Hodgson, and number 91, that's Dave Butler on a Suzuki 650 Mini Twin. So Dave, who had a fall here yesterday at Brands Hatch, is back at the sharp end. 66 there, Daniel Freer, who's racing at Thundersport this year, also on a 600 experience rider. There's Ozzy Mady, 
You may remember him from last year, Aussie out there, just ahead of Neil Schofield. In fact, number 19 out on circuit. Aussie made a number 75 out there on a Kawasaki ZXR 400. There's George Stanley, number five. This is his first season on a 450. He's a super teen rider from last year, so just getting to grips with it. But, uh, well, not taking quite as long to get used to the 450 is David Allingham, of course. Uh, a, man a young man plagued with injury last year, stopped him from winning championships. He broke his collarbone two or three weeks ago, but he's absolutely flying here. No signs of the collarbone causing him any problems. These youngsters do bounce well. It's amazing how they can come back into racing at such short space after breaking a collarbone. That would put me out for a whole year. Ross Twyman, number 15, around the outside and moves up to second place. Alex Baker getting right in the mix also. And whilst those lot battle for second place, David Allingham is away with it. That's a rider down over at McLaren. That's Rob Garland's bike. Well, you can see his bike, but I can't see the rider. And rumours are that the rider is up and OK. He's walked away. That's uh, Dave Jacks there. Yep, there's Rob Garland. If he was to take that helmet off, you would see a fine specimen of a haircut there. The best haircut in the paddock. Number 11 it is that leads, though, about to come up and put a lap on Harrison Warren, number 16, out there on a Ducati 750. There's Ross Twyman once again, hanging it around the outside of Alex Baker, number 22. Alex has come on leaps and bounds since last year, his first year on a 450 last season, and now he's battling for podiums. Coming up on Harrison Warren now is Baker, who goes back underneath Ross Twyman into Druids. Daniel Freer is just sitting there watching this all develop in front of him. Meanwhile, David Allingham there, new sponsor for 2013. Beemore flying away at the front, lapping. Well, his lap times aren't actually that much quicker than the guys behind. It's just that he managed to get that lead over the first few laps whilst this lot have been scuffling away. There is number 22, Alex Baker, rider from Ormskirk, chasing Ross Twyman. There's Ben Luxton, number nine. Ben from Stockport, another former super team. This is his second year on a 450, and I think he might just surprise one or two people this year. If he can get his confidence up, he's definitely capable of getting on the podium. Another super team competitor from a couple of years ago. Saw a quick glimpse there of uh, Ricardo Garotti number 45 that David Allingham's now approaching and putting a lap on. And then Neil Schofield, number 19. So this is nice and easy stuff so far for the 450 Aprilia of David Allingham, who's looking to get himself off to a winning start to 2013, despite nursing that collarbone injury. Alex Baker is having a great ride there in second place. It's definitely the highest position we've ever seen Alex in. And uh, let's hope he doesn't get a nosebleed from it. Daniel Freer is in third overall on that Kawasaki 650. And Ross Twyman's just lost out a bit there. There's number 14, Will Hodgson, currently in seventh place. Having a good scrap with Sam Smith, number 111 on the Kawasaki ZXR 400. Back to the front. There's your leader, number 11, going through. Ahead of Daniel Freer now. And Daniel Freer has taken a massive advantage out of the fact that he's dicing through the back markers a little easier than both Ross Twyman and Alex Baker. Pete Gibson going through there also. There is Ross Twyman, number 15. He's got himself ahead of Alex Baker, but he's now got to chase down Daniel Freer. And Daniel Freer looks to be catching David Allingham at the front hip. Daniel lapping around about six tenths of a lap quicker than Daniel, uh, than David Allingham out front. There is third place man Ross Twyman, and in the background, fourth place man Alex Baker. So the back markers here have really spread out the top four in what was looking like a close race before that. There is number 11, David Allingham, now coming up to lap 18th place, Michael Evans. Up towards Druids he comes, and he should just... I think he's got a big enough lead there to be able to guard that until the finish line. The rider out there on the Beemore Aprilia, you'll be able to catch him in action in this class and in the Aprilia 450s throughout 2013. This has been a really good race from David from start to finish. Comes through Surtees now, flicks right to McLaren. There's Daniel Freer on the blue and yellow uh, Kawasaki 650. And just behind Daniel is Ross Twyman. And then 
Alex Baker. So Baker's still going to get a good finish here. They're coming up to take the chequered flag now, and it is indeed a win for David Allingham. First time out on TV day. He has a look over his shoulder, and he sees that it is Daniel Freer that takes second overall. Ross Twyman goes across the line a tenth of a second quicker than Alex Baker for third. And it's Jamie Thackeray that takes fifth place ahead of Dave Butler on the Suzuki Mini Twin. Just saw a quick glimpse there also of Sam Smith, 111 on the Kawasaki 400. He takes seventh overall and wins the Formula 400 event. So Allingham, confirmation then, 1.7 seconds, his win in the end ahead of Daniel Freer. Twyman third ahead of Baker, Jamie Thackeray and Dave Butler. And on the podium there, David Allingham. There's no uh, Daniel Freer as he's got to take part in the next race. And Ross Twyman in the Mini Twins. Dave Butler was the winner from Lewis Black and Alex Platt. And in the 400s, it's a great win for Sam Smith there, finishing ahead of Ozzy Mady and Michael Evans. Winner of the Formula 400, Sam Smith. You had quite a lead in your class, but I understand you were close to Dave Butler, who was in the Mini Twins. Was that a close battle between you? Um, he got ahead of me at the beginning of the race, so I had to give everything I could to catch up to him, but my hands just froze at the end of the race, and I just gave it my all. Are the conditions quite tricky out there on the track? Oh, coming out of Druids, it's slippy as hell. It's just, you can't keep your bike straight. So yeah, it's really difficult. Well, it proves you well with the trophy in your hand. Any sponsors you'd like to thank? Um, I'd like to thank all the members of the 111 Club, um, CB Constructions, Kabuto Helmets, just everyone, thank you so much. Thank you very much. And winner of the Mini Twins, Dave Butler. We've just spoken to Sam Smith. That was quite a battle between you two. Yeah, apparently so. I didn't, I didn't see much of him. I got a helmet at the start and uh, never seen him since. So um, well, He was close behind you. All right, I'll take your word for it. So, uh, are, the, are the conditions quite tricky out there? Yeah, it's still a bit slippy out through it. So I got a few slides in a warm-up lap and I wasn't, wasn't prepared to push it. I fell off yesterday leading. So I've had enough for that weekend. So. And any sponsors you'd like to thank? Uh, yeah, first of all, I'd like to thank... Uh, uh, Quinn Agri Services, Spears Enterprises, uh, my uncle Des, uh, Clifford Family, uh, Noel Power, 30 Cafe, and uh, I'd like to wish my mother happy Mother's Day. Thank you. And winner of the Super Twins, David Allingham. This proves to be a good weekend for you. Do you like Brands Hatch? Yeah, I like it, track. Yeah, it's really good. Um, just obviously, it's a letdown about that spot up there. Um, it's just it's very slippy, you can't, you can't even get the power down, it's not fun to ride up with those stop corners, but yeah, I managed to get around pretty good. Um, didn't get the best of starts, but I seen that everybody was so timid in that first couple of laps, so I thought, right, this is my chance to start making moves. Um, I, don't know why, I don't know why they were all going slow around the rest of the track, because there's no oil there. But um, yeah, got out front, started, just looked at my pit board really, managed it, and um, yeah, I'm happy with that. And any sponsors you'd like to thank? Yeah, I'd like to give a big shout out to the Beemore boys. Um, my dad and Gail for coming, he hit J Group, um, Ian Newton, Myra Newton, um, Jimmy, everybody, so Redstone, Silkling, everybody, thank you very much. Thank you as well, David. Coming up after the break, the Motodex Pre National 600s. Welcome back to Brands Hatch. It's time for the Moto Dex performance first. Pre-National Sport 600s here, and David Brook, number 73, is on pole position. David, who took part in this championship last year, but in the second round, smashed himself to pieces injury-wise. Number eight there, second on the grid, is Paul Convin, rider that races for the, or under the banner of the RAF Motorsports Association. Third on the grid, number 64, Michael Tustin, and then it's James Shaw, number four on a Kawasaki, fourth on the grid. This championship last year was won by Barry Teasdale. He has moved on to the GP1 class on a super stock thousand bike sponsored by Bike Insurer, and he's done very, very well for himself thanks to this class. Of course, well, 
Who's in it? It's in the name. Riders with uh, that are up to pre-national license status, so no riders with a national license are on the grid. The majority of them are novices, hence the orange bibs, and we are ready to go for the first time in 2013. It looks like a really good start from number, number eight there, Paul Convin, who might just get the whole shot. David Brook was just on the outside of him, and Brook it is that gets the whole shot down into turn one. David Brook, as I mentioned, a rider that last year, second round, smashed himself to pieces. I think he broke both wrists a uh, couple of ribs, etc. Didn't come back until late on in the season and his confidence was knocked. Well, he's got himself fighting fit over the winter and he's come back with a bang here. And he leads down into Graham Hill. These bikes are all in Superstock and Formula 604. But as I mentioned, the riders, doesn't matter if they've been racing for two or three years, provided they don't have a pre-national license or they don't have a national license, they are eligible to race. And David Brook here has been riding for a couple of years now. He's just up ahead of James Shaw there in second place. This championship this year, sponsored by Moto Dex Performance First, a company owned by Tony Dexter. They sell motorcycle-related products based in Bavaria in Germany. And believe it or not, he does make the trip over here for each Thundersport round. David Brook leading at the moment. In fact, Tony also uh, owns C6 Innovations, a company that uh, make and build carbon fiber products for F1 cars, aircraft, etc. So uh, good on Tony. Good to have him on board in Thundersport for this year. And there's a rider down, and that's Paul Convin, I think, down into Graham Hill Bend. He was lucky that he didn't fall into the path of some riders that were following. But he landed flat out, face down there. He's lucky to be up and walking away. And let's have another look at that. Yep, just on the brakes, lost the front end down into Graham Hill Bend on a damp patch. Paul Convin out of this race in the Motodex Performance First Pre-National Sport 600. Shame for him, but he'll be back for more action at Donington Park. Meanwhile, at the front, trying to go around the outside there is James Shaw on the Kawasaki, number four there doesn't quite work. In fact, he loses all momentum completely. So it's still David Brook on the Yamaha that lead, leads. David Brook from uh, Bradford. He actually owns uh, Brook suspension. So one presumes that he's a dab hand at setting up his own suspension, which always comes in handy. Certainly when you're competing at the sharp end of a championship here at Thundersport GB. Brook leads from Shaw. Third place, it is Michael Tustin. Number 64. Further back there is number 35, Anthony Charlie, Wayne Crossman, 194. Also got Tim Daisley, keep an eye out for Tim, number 122, a rider that uh, qualified pretty well yesterday, but just really struggled to get off the line. And Tim is a, a rider that has also got himself fighting fit for this year. A rider from the army, spent 14 years as a tank commander in the army. There he is, number 122, going through ahead of 35, Anthony Charlie. Anthony from Coventry, racing on the AC Farriers Kawasaki. There's a quite a large gap between third place man there, Tustin, and the chasing pack. Further behind, as we see a few spits of rain on the camera, saw 47 there, Frank Gallagher on the Honda. But it's still Brooke from Shaw and Tustin, the top three. A few wobbles under braking there as they head into Druids, number 194 there, Wayne Crossman, just in fourth place, trying to close that gap down on the top three. Shaw in second, trying to chase down Brook. Earlier on, he tried the wide line. It didn't really work, and he lost all of his momentum. Let's see what he can do this time. You can just see the spits of rain again on the camera, we understand that the majority of the riders out there are have opted for the wet tyres. The temperatures out on circuit so cold, they just cannot get any grip out of the dry tyres. There are one or two that have uh, chanced it, but the riders that have gone for the wet option have prevailed. Wet tyres these days, well, you, you might think that they'd be chewed up under these circumstances, but that, as I said, there are some damp patches. The temperatures are so cold that they're working a treat at the moment. So the two leaders have gone through, David Brook and James Shaw, and there's an enormous gap back to third place man, Michael Tustin, who's now coming under serious threat from number 194, Wayne Crossman. In the background there, that looked like Tim Daisley, 122. Despite a, a poor start, has got his act together. That there is number four, 
James Shaw just trying to catch up with race leader David Brook. And there is Tustin, number 64, on the team MTR Kawasaki. And just behind him, Wayne Crossman. Onto the start, finish straight, they come. That is your third place man, Tustin. Crossman just behind him. And then Anthony Charlie is in fifth place. Well, he was, but Tim Daisley has just snatched that off him. So Tim Daisley, let's have a look at his lap times. He's in the 56s, so he's lapping quicker than everybody in front of him, with the exception of the front two guys, which makes sense. Looking at it out on circuit, Brooke and Shaw are away with this one. Further back, that's number 75, Jonathan Young from Rotherham on the JY Racing Yamaha. You can see from his uh, orange bib, this is one of his first outings, but not a first outing or a bad performance from David Brook. You can see that he's definitely got the uh, wet front in, and I think he's got a wet rear in as well. David Brook, he means business this year. Second place still to the green Kawasaki of James Shaw. This is the fight for third. Tustin still has it from Crossman. Tim Daisley looking to close that gap down. Across they go. There is Jonathan Young, who's about to be lapped. And look at that great move from Tim Daisley up the inside of Tustin, down into Paddock Hill Bend. He'll like that one. I can tell you that. He'll be watching this back home, and he'll, be, he'll have a great smile on his face when he sees this one back. Tim Daisley up to third place. And if only he could have started a bit better, he might have been up with the leaders. Here he comes now, number 122. Two. Tustin there on the purple and white machine just behind him. So this is a fight for third place. There's three or four bikes involved in it now. Meanwhile, out front, here is number 73, the black and red Yamaha of David Brook. Well, he set his suspension up perfectly for this one. He's got a three or four second lead now over James Shaw on the Kawasaki in second place. These riders in the Motodex performance first. Pre-National Sport 600s will be making their way to Donington Park next. After this round here at Brands Hatch in Kent. And on this final lap, David Brook is looking to pick up 25 points and should just be able to cruise home now. Decent lap times as well. These lap times would put him well up in the Van Insurer 600 Sportsman Elite class. And if he takes most points from this weekend, he might just find himself in that class at the next round. There is the race leader, David Brook, around Graham Hill Bend, onto the Cooper Strait. Just a few more turns to deal with now. Surtees. McLaren, Clearways, Clark Curve, and then onto the Brabham Strait to take the chequered flag. We don't want to give him the commentator's curse, but here he is. A good win from start to finish here for David Brook. Looks as though James Shaw will take a comfortable second place. Still a scrap on for third, though, across the line. Brook takes the win here and 25 points. Second place is going to go to James Shaw, number four. But who is going to grab third? It's between Daisley and Anthony Charlie as they come up to take the checker flag. And it is Tim Daisley that takes third place on his Kawasaki ahead of Anthony Charlie. And Wayne Crossman finishes in fifth place ahead of Frank Gallagher in sixth. So Michael Tust in seventh, Westerdale eighth, Young in ninth, and Nick Matthews tenth. Confirmation of the top six on screen. Almost a five second win for David Brook, number 73. There is David, center picture alongside James on the left and Tim Daisley on the right. Championship points going into Donington, then it's Brook, Shaw, and Daisley as you saw them on the podium, all in the top three. Winner of the pre national sport 600, David Brook. A very strong race for you there. Uh, could you see a few wheels in the corner of your eye? Yeah, um, I got a wheel at the top of Paddock Hill, got a pretty poor start um, and managed to just stick my elbows out, led into Druids and then from then on in I just got into a rhythm and, and went race distance without much, much uh, opposition really. A very strong race, any sponsors that you'd like to thank? Yeah, Brook Suspension, um, Haley. Phil Beckworth, um, Cindy Beckworth, Mortal Oils, Shuey and Sidney. Excellent race, thank you. Still another two races to come up here on Thundersport Plus. Join us again after the break.
Welcome back to Brands Hatch for Thundersport Plus round one of 2013. Next up, it is the RST Clothing Golden Era Superbikes and new for 2013, the Sparklight Racing Golden Era Super Sport 600s. They do score separate points. They're all in one race. Pole position there for 56, Alan Batson. What experience he has out there on the Triumph 955. Second place on the grid for Nick Williamson, a contender last year. Rob Wilson, 57, likewise on the Kawasaki ZXR7 in third. And Richard Blunt on the uh, number 13, fourth on the grid on the SRAD Suzuki. I've got to say, well, what a turnaround this is. Last year it was new for Thundersport, this class, and it was just getting off the ground. We had sort of 10, 12, maybe 13 people interested in it this year. Wow. Well, we started off with about 38 people going into qualifying. There's a few fallers here and there, one or two rusty riders that have took a few tumbles. So we've got a couple of gaps on the grid, but nonetheless, it's uh, set to be a fantastic season of racing. And see if you can spot some familiar names from years gone by, shall we say. Uh, out off the line, as usual, just like last year, it is number 13 on the SRAD Suzuki. Richard Blunt lights the machine away and gets the whole shot down into turn one. Also keep a BBI out for number 77, Lee Reevely on the Aprilia Mille, defending champion. He has won four Thundersport titles in his five years of racing. As they head now into Druids, you can see a number of riders going through there. Number two I just spotted, that was Sam Nicholson. But uh, all sorts of brilliant machinery, of course. This class is for machines effectively from the old Superbike Day era. You think of uh, the days of Carl Fogarty versus Scott Russell. Well, that's exactly what we're replicating here. But now with the Super Sport as well, well, I'll try and keep you up to date with who is up in the top three but it's at the moment, overall, Blunt leads. It's Nick Williamson in second place, number six. That's Craig Jeff, number 16 on the Aprilia Mille, side by side with last year's champion, uh, Lee Reevely. And as we head down now into turn one, I tell you what, one of the questions I've got to ask here is where is Alan Batson? Alan Batson has gone missing. Uh, our pole man, pole position man, number 56, I think he's gone down, you know. So we've lost Alan Batson, which is a bit of a surprise. We just saw Sean Goldsmith there. Oh, blimey. Richard Blunt almost losing the rear end there, the race leader. There's Craig Jeff moving up into second place. There's Nick Williamson third. Sean Goldsmith, biggest smile in the paddock, is uh, up there also. So we've got a bit of a mixture up front. John Dieterman, number 18, on that uh, weird and wonderful Ducati 860. He's built that himself, and it's a wonderful bit of kit. He's up into the top 10 also. And that is Craig Jeff now fighting alongside Richard Blunt. That a pretty melee. He's got far more power than that uh, little Suzuki SRAD 750. And that's number 62 there in third. Jason Dixon out there. Jason Dixon having a, a good go at this. He's moved up into third place ahead of Williamson. Lee Reevely, well... Last year's champion said he wanted some competition this year, but he's got it. I mean, there are six or seven bikes up ahead of him on circuit at the moment. It is early days, of course. You can't win the championship in the first round. You can certainly lose it. There is Jason Dixon moving ahead of Richard Blunt. Uh, Jason, who has a Suzuki, which has confused me, but he's obviously got an Aprilia Mille also as a weapon of choice this year. In fact, Richard Blunt in third has also got a Kawasaki ZX-7 to throw at this championship as well if he needs it. So Dixon there up to second place. It is Craig Jeff that leads. Dixon second, Blunt in third. A couple of other names to mention further down the field. Uh, Lee Reevely is still in seventh. Chris Norris is with us this year, number 22. He's also on an Aprilia Mille, easily capable of finishing in the top three this year. Dixon looks about, oh, I thought he was going to move up into the lead there into Paddock Hill Bend, but Craig Jeff really late on the brakes. Uh, Bob Docker's out there on a Kawasaki in the Super Super Sports, along with Lee Longdon, Mark Evans, a former Thundersport 500 champion, and Adam Sheriff. Further back, you've got Stu Wilson. Welcome back to Stu out there on a YZF 750 Yamaha. Good to have him back out racing. Sean Goldsmith is on the MV Augusta. Jamie Hitter, number 10, out on a Kawasaki ZX7. He won a Bemzy Powerbike Championship back in 1999, and he's uh, 
got his leathers back on again. He's a bit rusty this weekend, but uh, keep an eye out for him this season. Meanwhile, at the front, it's Craig Jeff, the former Thundersport 500 rider that leads ahead of Jason Dixon, number 62. Third place for Blunt. Fourth place for Nick Williamson. Nick Williamson really is going strong so far. There is number 911, Adam Sheriff on the old CBR Honda 600. He's doing well, number 911. Lee Longdon currently leading that uh, super sport race sponsored by Sparklight Racing on a Ducati 748. So he's going well. There's Williamson just up ahead of number 52, Sean Goldsmith on circuit. There is uh, Williamson number six and there is Sean Goldsmith. In fact, just ahead of Chris Norris, number 22, a former Super Twins runner. And up, oh, and Sean Goldsmith there. Uh, and he high sides out of Graham Hill Ben. That could have been really nasty. Get out of the way, Sean. Well, the man with the biggest smile in the paddock, he might not be smiling now. That looked like it hurt, and that beautiful road bike of his has been smashed to pieces. The MV Augusta in bits on the exit there of Graham Hill Bend. Richard Blunt now scrapping away with number six, Nick Williamson, as they go around to complete yet another lap. Craig Jeff still leads. Dixon in second. Then there's a small gap back to Blunt. Williamson in fourth place. So that crash from... Um, Sean Goldsmith means that Rob Wilson and Chris Norris will move up to fifth and sixth, and Lee Reevely moves up to seventh place overall. Coming into Druids, there is Norris and Rob Wilson, number 57. Rob actually did put in a bit of a complaint about my commentary last year, saying that I got the colour of his bike wrong. So just to make sure that we don't get it wrong this year, he's decided to spray it lime green, just as a Kawasaki should be. There is number 16, Craig Jeff. Heading into McLaren now, the race leader really has got to grips with that machine well. Number 96 is Ian Evans on the Kawasaki ZX7 there, just being lapped. And there is Richard Blunt, that battle between him on the Suzuki and Nick Williamson on the Aprilia continues. 33 and 21 going through there. Well, 33 is Don Plain, who's picked up a 10 second jump start penalty. We've got 21 Lee Longdon, leader of the Super Sport race, and Phil Page up in the top 10. Trusty old Phil doing well on that uh, hideously coloured uh, Kawasaki. I'm sure you won't mind me saying that. Blamange pink. He's got stacks of the stuff, uh, the, paint, the paint, I mean. So uh, he's painting just about everything he can in the same colour. Craig Jeff, number 16. Well, what a class this is turning out to be this season. Nice to have a full grid. And I think with the exception of the fact that Craig is running off in this race. It looks to be an interesting championship. There is number 21, Lee Longdon, leading the race on the 748 Ducati. Not the only rider out there on a 748 Ducati. In fact, Brad Davies out there on a hired 748. And it's uh, courtesy of Mad Azel, Mark Lum. So keep an eye out for Brad Davey. Of course, last year's Street Fighter C champion also out in this race. There is Dixon, number 62. And around the outside there on the SRAD Suzuki, Richard Blunt. Brilliant move around Paddock Hill. Ben and Craig Jeff. Well, he's got a six and a half, seven second lead and he almost throws it all away on the exit there of Druids. The rain started to come down. In fact, that looks more like hail. It is hail, heavy hailstones falling here. So just got to slow things down a little bit here. Craig Jeff, number 16 from Barnsley on the 2JR Cross Lane Garage Aprilia. Focusing there with a clear visor, of course, in these tricky conditions here today at Brands Hatch. This is that battle for second place between Blunt and Dixon. And despite the fact that Effectively, Dixon's got the grunt. That's going to go all the way to the line. Craig Jeff wins it in fine style. Who's going to get to the line for second? It is going to be Blunt on the more nimble Suzuki 750. Jason Dixon takes third on the Aprilia. And it's going to be Nick Williamson across the line in fourth, ahead of Rob Wilson and Chris Norris, with defending champion Lee Reevely in seventh. What a championship we've got. Craig Jeff wins it then from Blunt and Jason Dixon in third. There they are, all dressed in black on the podium. It's like Emmerdale Farm. The Golden Era Super Sports standings then. Lee Longdon took the victory ahead of Bob Docker. Mark Evans claimed third ahead of Adam Sheriff and Sam Nicholson. And there is the happy Lee, the winner in the middle. 
golden era super bike standings then richard blunt will go into donnington with a lead over nick williamson lee reevely the defending champion is third head of alan batson and in the golden era super sport it's close bob docker leads from adam sheriff lee longdon davy nicholson and evans golden era super sport winner lee longdon how was the race out there for you do you like brands hatch um, yeah, Brands Hatch is not too uh, too bad of a circuit, but today's conditions with uh, with the previous instances uh, in the GP1 class, uh, some of the corners are very very tricky, and uh, just looking you know to stay on board the uh, the Ducati today, and uh, looking forward to the next race this afternoon. Excellent. And have you got any sponsors you'd like to thank? Uh, I haven't, no, but I'd like to dedicate this to my mum, being Mother's Day. Um, she can't make it this weekend; she's working. So um, yeah, this is for you, mum. And winner of the Golden Era Superbike, Craig Jeff. You had to make your way to the front on the first lap, but you led it for most of the race. Yeah, it was a difficult, uh, difficult start uh, on inside on fourth row. Uh, kind of got boxed in, but just felt that I had pace to go for it. Uh, especially after I had a difficult day yesterday with wrong tyre choices, so it was just a bit of a confidence booster to you know, remind me that I can be up there. Like. So, yeah. And how are the conditions on the track for you? Was that proving tricky out there? Yeah, it is pretty tricky, but the majority of the circuit is quite dry. It's just with oil spillage up around Druids, it's a little bit slippy. Had a couple of moments that just reminded me, you know, that it's a bit dangerous. But overall, it was pretty good, really, apart from cold. Excellent. And any sponsors you'd like to thank? Uh, yeah, I'd just like to thank Ian at Cross Lane Garage in Wakefield uh, for all help he's done over winter. And just my family and my friends for supporting me. Well done on you, Ian. Thank you very much. Well, don't go away, one race still to come. The JHS Racing Super Twins, including the 400s. Baker, though, is in third there, and Ross Twyman. In fact, there is Jamie Thackeray, just made it to the line. It's getting quite windy here late on in the day at Brands Hatch. On the second row there, you can just about see that Kawasaki ZXR 400 of Sam Smith's, number 111. That is, of course, Josh Daly's winning Formula 400 bike of last season. Just next to him, on the blue and yellow machine on the second row, is Daniel Freer. It was up in the top three or four in race one, but it was David Allingham, number 11, who's just hidden away on the second row on the white Aprilia 450, the Be More Aprilia, that won the race by a country mile in race one. But it's a good start this time, hopefully, I think he'll say, from Jamie Thackeray. And right around the outside was coming, uh, ooh, let's have a look, I think that was Daniel Freer, all the way around the outside as well. We'll wait and see as they come up towards Druids now. And it is, in fact, Ross Twyman that has the lead from Jamie Thackeray and Daniel Freer, as you just see Dave Butler there, number 91, going around. So Twyman leads from Thackeray. Now it's Allingham up to third, Freer fourth, Alex Baker in fifth place. And then I think Will Hodgson. So Twyman and Thackeray getting away well at the front. Well, this is very different to what we saw in race, race one, of course, that white Aprilia of David Allingham. There he is, making a move on Freer. He got away and nobody could catch him. Will we see a different story here? There's Ben Luxton going right round the outside at Clearways. On to the start-finish straight we go. Number 15 it is that leads Ross Twyman. Jamie Thackeray, second. What a great day it would be for either of these guys if they can beat the opposition behind them, chasing them down. Allingham on the white, be more Aprilia in third. Fourth place for Freer, number 66 on the Kawasaki 650. And then it's Alex Baker on the BBR Aprilia in fifth place. Will Hodgson still up there in that Kawasaki ZX400, ZXR400 of Sam Smith's is up in the top seven or eight also. Up towards Surtees they go. And Ross Twyman looking very comfortable indeed at the front of this one. Not led 
too many races, Ross, but he's always been fighting for wins. He's a capable rider, but look who's coming on the white Aprilia, taking a beautiful line around Clearways and onto Clark Curve, and he's going to pop out of the slipstream of Jamie Thackeray there. Twyman it is that leads, but David Allingham's going to go the long way round here into Paddock Hill Bend, and he makes it stick. That's really nice stuff there from David Allingham around the outside of Jamie Thackeray, and he moves up into second place. So these Aprilias... Uh, first, second and third with a Kawasaki 650 fourth, another Aprilia in fifth and that is another Aprilia seventh and a Kawasaki ZXR 400 in eighth place. Further back there we just saw a glimpse of Aussie Maidy and 43 Alex Platt. Alex out there on a 650 Mini Twin, a former super team rider. Tipping into... McLaren and Clearways now. David Allingham's looking to go the long way round everywhere at the moment. Look at the drive he's getting out of Clearways, and that is super stuff here from David Allingham. He'll pull up alongside Ross Twyman on the start-finish straight. Here comes Daniel Freer in the background as well. He moves past Jamie Thackeray for third, and they're almost three abreast into turn one, but Ross Twyman says, no, you don't. Shuts the door on David Allingham down into Paddock Hill Bend as they dip down into Halewood Hill. Druids and it's still just Twyman from Allingham. Freer is now on the move. There is the Kawasaki of Sam Smith. He's trying with all his might to keep up with this uh, leading group of seven riders. Further back there, you can see number 76, Andy Chalice, on a Ducati 800. But this is a good battle at the front. Twyman it is that leads still from the Northern Irish rider, David Allingham. Allingham, look at the speed he's got through McLaren. He did this on the last lap and it's given him so much momentum around clearways. He's going around the outside there. There's a bit of a dip in the circuit. You've got to be ever so careful. And once more, well, look at Freer as well. The, the power of his Kawasaki. We are three abreast going down into Paddock Hill Bend. And Freer has gone from third up into first place. What a race this is here. The JHS Racing Super Twins. And none of them want to give it up. Ross Twyman is fighting back again up the inside into Druids now. So it's Twyman from Freer. And David Allingham third. Baker in fourth. Further back, that is number 20, Oliver Dupoy on the Kawasaki 6.50. We'll try and catch our breath here. And Daniel Freer has found his way to the front of this one now, ahead of Ross Twyman. Look who's coming around the outside again. It's David Allingham on the Beemore Aprilia. Baker and Thackeray in fourth and fifth. They want in on the action as well. And we're three abreast again across the start finish line. In the background there, Will Hodgson also wants a piece of the action. And in between the pair of them, David Allingham catches them both napping and goes up into the lead. And Twyman slams it up the inside of Freer as well. This is a fabulous race here at Brands Hatch. Exactly what we wanted to see. Allingham, it is, that leads now from Ross Twyman and Daniel Freer. And this is the point where the rest of the riders have got to be careful because Allingham has got the capability of clearing off in this one, as he showed in race one. Once again, we pan back to number 20, Oliver Dupoy, in 12th place overall. But it's Allingham that leads, number 11. Done ever so well to find his way up to the top here. And Daniel Freer, well... Is Allingham tried to make a break for it? We'll see as they come across the line. I fancy this to be probably one of the fastest laps of the race. And as they come across the line, they've been in the late 54s. That's a 54.4 from David Allingham. So he's pulled the pin. Will Hodgson now has got up and past Jamie Thackeray and Alex Baker. Look at all these scraps going further down the field. Unbelievable stuff. In seventh is Sam Smith. He leads the 400s. Then it's Luxton, Luke Thackeray, George Stanley, Lewis Black, Oliver Dupoy, Dave Butler, Ozzy Maidy and Lee Wainwright. That's just the top 15. Can't keep up with this one. At the front, it is still David Allingham and he's got about a half a second lead at the moment over Ross Twyman who has fought his way past Daniel Freer. They're now filtering their way through some traffic, and Allingham is making light work of that. He uses the white colour scheme for these JHS Racing Super Twin racers and then reverts back to the standard black for the 450 racers, and that's a great win from Allingham. I can't even guess who's come second, third, and fourth, but the time screens tell me that Ross Twyman has pipped it Ahead of Will Hodgson, Will's done very well to get himself up into third. He bumped Daniel Freer off the podium. 
Jamie Thackeray has taken fifth place and Alex Baker's sixth. So Sam Smith across the line in seventh out of Ben Luxton. Sam wins the Formula 400. What a race here from Brands Hatch in the JHS Racing Super Twins. And Allingham takes another victory. He had to work for this one ahead of Twyman and Will Hodgson. There they are on the podium. Allingham in the middle, Ross on the left and Will Hodgson on the right. In the Mini Twins, it's Lewis Black, Dave Butler and Lee Wainwright. And in the 400s, it's Sam Smith, Ozzy Mady and Michael Evans. The points going into Donington, then look how close it is. Six points separating Daniel Freer, Allingham and Ross Twyman. Winner of the Formula 400, Sam Smith. A good race win for you there. How did you find it? Freezing. So cold. Um, it was a great race. Pushed as hard as I could from the beginning. Um, I love being in this new class. It's just so much faster. It's just a hell of a lot more fun. It's amazing. And you were on the 125s last year. What's the difference between the bikes? What can you feel? Um, the brakes are a lot heavier. Like The back wheel's constantly trying to come up. The speeds down the straights are just phenomenal. It's just amazing. It's doing you well to get a trophy. And any sponsors you'd like to thank? Um, CB Constructions, all the members of the 111 Club. Um, I'd like to thank GTEC Performance, um, everyone. Thank you so much. Well done on you, win. And winner of the Digital Mini Twins, Lewis Black. A trophy for you today, the first one of the weekend? Yeah, first one of the weekend. Uh, yeah, it's been a great weekend. Uh, just like to say a huge thanks to all my sponsors, really. Knox, Bell Helmets, um, everyone else, Buff, uh, Sumi, uh, and majorly a huge thanks to my dad for building the bike and uh, my uh, mechanic Andy for uh, building it as well. So. Excellent, well done on you, Win. And winner of the Super Twins, David Allingham. You're having quite a few appearances up here. Yeah, I'm enjoying it this weekend. Um, that last race was really tough, to be honest. Um, there's six of us at the front or something. I didn't want to look behind, so I don't know how many was behind us. But um, yeah, I didn't get the best to start to get really boxed in at the first corner. Um, then I made a couple of moves, worked my way up to first. Unfortunately, I just got stuck behind back markers and they weren't letting me get away, were they? Um, yeah, and in my last lap, I thought, right, I just have to go. I'm just have to go, and go for a move, and I uh, managed to pass both of them at the paddock hill. So yeah, I'm really happy with that. It was a really good race. And talk to us about that last corner. That was some move round the outside. Yeah, every lap I came round, I thought, not again. They're not going to let me go round the outside in the game, but they never shot the door. So I thought, you know what? I'm just going to keep on doing it. <laughs> so you should. And any sponsors you'd like to thank? Yeah, I'd like to thank Beemore, I'd like to spend uh, Beemore, EHA, my dad, Gail, and I actually kept missing out my mechanic Grainsy coming this weekend, a big help. Um, yeah, Silk Lane, Bridgestone, everybody, thank you very much. Well done, thank you. Well, that's it from round one, and that's it from Brands Hatch in 2013. Join us again next time from Donington Park, where we'll have another four races for you. Round one of the 2013 season kicks off here at Brands Hatch. It's the Moto Dex Performance First pre-national sport 600s. And pole position is number 73, David Brook. A rider that entered this championship last year, battered himself about at round two and couldn't really get his confidence back together. Paul Cunvin, who crashed in race one, hasn't made it to the grid in this second race just as yet. There's Michael Tustin on the purple and white Kawasaki. Uh, who is third on the grid, and number four, James Shaw on the Kawasaki. You can see that uh, everyone on the front row and the second row as well, by the looks of things, are all on wet tyres. It's been an incredibly cold, wet and windy day here at Brands Hatch, so we're not expecting uh, lap records to go, but we are expecting one or two new names on the podium. Last year's champion, Barry Teasdale, has moved on. He is now racing in the Bike Insurer GP1 class on a Superstock 1000. So, time to crown a new winner for 2012. And we are go here in race two, down into turn one. And David Brook will look to try and get the whole shot, just as he did in the first race. James Shaw, though, on the Kawasaki, got off to a pretty good start also. 
And as they make their way up into Druids, it is both Brooke and Shaw. In fact, it's going to be Shaw that leads from David Brooke. It looks like Tustin has just tucked in into third place. There is Tim Daisley, probably back in eighth or ninth place there. Got a bit of work to do, just as he has done pretty much all weekend. Uh, that's what Anthony Charlie has moved up just ahead of Wayne Crossman there. So a number of different riders to keep your eyes out for this year. Of course, the pre-national sport 600 a championship for riders that haven't managed to attain a national license as yet so half the field is full of riders that have been riding for one or two years the rest all rookies and you'll be able to spot the rookies a mile off hopefully because they should be wearing their orange vests across the line though to complete lap one it is james shaw number four the rider from manchester on the hillshaw racing kawasaki that leads down into turn one ahead of, well, David Brooke was in the top three as he's second place there, and that's Tustin, just on the purple and white Kawasaki, really late on the brakes as he moves up into second place. A bit further back there, it's 31, Colin Wilson. Colin racing uh, under the Royal Navy Motorsport banner. Just up in the top six, a number of the military services members from all over the RAF, the Navy, the Army, they all take part in this race. There is number 64 in the rider on the Team MTR Kawasaki, rider from Evesham, Michael Tustin, and Tim Daisley, just a couple of places further back. Going through the field, we've got uh, a couple of riders missing since the first race this morning, a number of riders that have gone down at the front, though, it is still James Shaw that leads, tipping into Druid. Second for Tustin, third for Brooke. Then it's Anthony Charlie, number 35, on the AC Farriers Kawasaki. And James Shaw, well, he's got his act together in this race. He finished second in the first race here at Brands Hatch this morning, but really getting things together now, pushing through Surtees. James from Manchester on the Hillshaw Racing Kawasaki here around clear as you can see the wind blowing a few leaves across the circuit not ideal conditions and sure really winding the power up around clearways there's a bit of a dip in the circuit there you have to be a bit careful of we just saw 47 and 17 47 is frank gallagher 17 gary hignett they're a navy and uh, RAF, so they're both racing with each other of course at thundersport gb there is the combined military service championship the military guys and girls competing in various championships of their choice. They do also score points in their own championship table too, we should just point out. But that's sponsored by the Isle of Man Race Products in association with GB Racing. And I've got to tell you, the competition between the Army, the Royal Navy and the RAF is fierce. They really do want to win that. That's, uh, it's amazing, really to think, but I would imagine that most of the combined military service championship runners, they're probably more worried about winning that than they are their actual solo championships. And we've got a rider down here. And well, I think it's number, well, it is number 64, courtesy of Michael Tustin actually having number 64 on his helmet. You can see the purple and white Kawasaki there. And a rider that was probably favorite to finish in the top three or four has gone down. So it's James Shaw that leads. David Brooke there is in second place. Third place for Anthony Charlie, number 35. And it's Tim Daisley, number 122, in fourth place. Tim, uh, one of the army boys. He's been a tank commander in the army for the last 14 years. He's uh, shedded a few pounds and got fighting fit ready for this season. And is going well. There is number four, James Shaw. About to come up and put a lap on number 25. 25 being Josh Hill, and that's not the son of Damon, that has the same name. Josh Hill, our Josh Hill from Sheffield, races in this, and of course the other Josh Hill in car racing. But across the line again there, number four, James Shaw. This has been a really good ride from him. He's lapping consistently half a second quicker than David Brooke on every single lap, and as a result, is some eight or nine seconds clear. Well, it doesn't look eight or nine seconds there, does it, as they tip into Druids. Josh Hill there about to be lapped by David Brooke. Josh just getting to grips with that Yamaha R6 this season. At the back, that's uh, number 194, Wayne Crossman, and number 31, Colin Wilson. Shaw coming into Surtees now. This one should be in the bag for him. 
It's going to be a close championship, this. Brooke looked like uh, he had everything sussed in race one earlier on today at Brands Hatch, but James Shaw has come back fighting on the Kawasaki. And onto the start finish straight he comes. He's lapping in the 56s, which isn't bad at all, you know. He's been in the top. He's decided to enter himself into the Van Insure Sportsman Elite 600 Championship this weekend also. And he's been faring quite well in that uh, championship also. So we have to keep an eye out for sure. I think he's definitely a hot prospect in this championship. He tips into Druids. There's Tim Daisley, number 122, out there on the black and red Kawasaki, his weapon of choice for this year. Marshall's just still trying to get clear that uh, bike of Michael Tustin. It looks as though that's all done and dusted now. Number 21, that's Baz Knight about to be lapped there. He's got his orange bib on. Onto the start, finish straight. One more time for James Shaw, number four, and he sees the last lap flag. He really has built quite a big gap up over David Brook now. David has got a little bit to worry about because Anthony Charlie has been closing up on him in second place. Let's see if we can see them in the background coming down Paddock Hill Bend. There's your race leader. And we just saw David Brook. We just saw a glimpse of David Brook in the background. But Anthony Charlie is catching. There is David. Oh, I don't think he's actually got as much to worry about as I thought. There's a, a good two seconds he's got over Anthony Charlie in third place. Tim Daisley still in fourth, but he's some three seconds behind Anthony, so looks as though Tim's going to miss out on a podium this time around, as is Wayne Crossman, Colin Wilson, Frank Gallagher, Paul Westerdale, Stephen McMillan and Dean Young. That's your top ten. On to the start, finish straight though. It's been a solid win. A great race for James Shaw. He wins here at Brands Hatch for race two and takes 25 points. He has a look back. Well, you'll have to wait some time to see second place man David Brook cross the line. But uh, to add to his win yesterday, David Brook does take second place ahead of Anthony Charlie, Tim Daisley, Wayne Crossman and Colin Wilson. Confirmation then of the top six. Sure it is that wins from just under two, 10 seconds his advantage was over David Brook. Charlie third, Daisley fourth, Crossman fifth, Colin Wilson sixth. And there they are on the podium. Very happy, James Shaw, centre of your picture. Third position in the pre-national sport 600s goes to Anthony Charlie. You qualified in eighth and you managed to get a podium. You must be happy with that. Oh, I'm ecstatic, my first podium ever. Um, I've only done sort of six or seven races in my life and I'm absolutely made up. I mean, I was struggling with tyre pressures and keeping the heat in the tyres the same as everybody else, but I sort of pulled it together towards the end and I am really chuffed, thank you. There is Brands Hatch a favourite circuit of yours now then? First time I've ever ridden here, I've never even done a track day here. Um, yeah, this is definitely my favourite now. Excellent. Any sponsors you'd like to thank? Uh, I haven't got any sponsors, but what I'd like to thank is um, the guys in the paddocks. I mean, I come here on my own and everybody chips in, helps me out. I mean, it's real good sportsman. Thank you. Excellent. Well done. And second position goes to David Brook. Another trophy in your hands. You must be happy with that. Yeah, yeah, really happy with that. It's been a good weekend. Got a win yesterday. Poor tyre choice yesterday left me with a six, um, but I'm, I'm not complaining at all. And now the temperature's cooling off, getting later in the day. Is that proving an issue? Not at this pace. Uh, front was a, it was running a little bit wide through the left-hander after coppice. But other than that, I wasn't. I was just trying to put in some steady laps. On. I didn't want to be um, having any spills at the end of the day. And any sponsors you'd like to thank? Uh, yeah, Shuey, City, Mortal, um, JT Motorcycles in Darwin, um, a couple of others, but mainly, mainly me, uh, help that's been here this weekend, the team, Phil Beckworth, Cindy Beckworth, my girlfriend Haley, Mark, um, and anyone else who, who helps. Well done, thank you. And first position goes to James Shaw. You qualified fourth on the grid and come through with a win. You must be happy. Yeah, really happy, yeah. I've had trouble setting my bike up. Uh, in the last race, I got second. Uh, I've softened my bike up loads and uh, I was losing traction on the back, but it seems to have worked in that last one. 
Excellent. And any sponsors you'd like to thank? Um, I'd like to say thanks to my, my mum and my dad and Mark Fisher and Tom Fisher and Jonathan Howarth as well. Well done. It's the RST clothing, Golden Era Superbikes and the Sparklight Racing, Golden Era Supersport, new for 2013. They score separate points. We've got a massive grid this year, a couple of gaps on the grid from some of the riders either just deciding that they want a glass of wine instead because it's too cold or a couple of riders that have fallen down the road. There's Nick Williamson, number six on his Honda, ahead of Rob Wilson, number 57 on the Kawasaki there and then Richard Blunt, number 13. Money's always got to go on Richard to get into turn one first. He is like a lightning bolt off the starting grid into turn one at any circuit. In the middle of the second row there, you can see the defending champion, number 77, Lee Reveley. Lee, who's still sponsored, of course, by E2E Solutions from Coventry on that Aprilia. Away they go, and guess what? Yep, it looks like it's the Suzuki of Richard Blunt that is going to get the whole shot into turn one. Richard, formerly a re resident of uh, Elverdon, now living in Bury St Edmunds. He leads from Nick Williamson. Craig Jeff, the race one winner from earlier, has moved up into third place. And that looked like Sean Goldsmith that has moved up into fourth. Sean, uh, unfortunately, managed to dump his beloved MV Augusta down the road earlier, but is back out playing again. And he's just up alongside John Deaton in there. John, who is out on the Ducati 860. Number 13, though, Richard Blunt. It's unlucky for some, but not for Richard. He leads from Williamson, Craig Jeff. There is Dieterman. Then Sean Goldsmith. That's number 911. That's Sheriff just going around the outside of numbers 22 and 77. Chris Norris and Lee Reverley. And now up towards Drew as we go. It's still Blunt that leads, but <laughs> Richard Blunt almost chopping the nose off there of Nick Williamson. Nick, who competed last year in this championship, the rider from Southampton on the RBM Honda. Further back, we've got a number of different competitors. I should just point out that in the 600 Super Sport category, sponsored by Sparklight Racing, at the moment it's looking like Number 911, Adam Sheriff on the old uh, CBR Honda 600 that leads from Bob Docker and Lee Longdon at the moment on the 748 Ducati. But at the front, there's not a lot to split. The three guys at the front, three riders that were in this championship last year, Richard Blunt leads from Nick Williamson and Craig Jeff. I'm delighted to say that joining us in the commentary box for this one is co-director of Thundersport GB, Thundersport Sid. Sid, welcome. Um, it's great to see a, a lot more numbers in this field this year, the Golden Era Superbikes and the, with the inclusion of the Supersport for 2013. It's lovely. Well, I'm really enjoying this. It was a tough year last year. It was the first year uh, for Golden Era Superbike, and uh, uh, many people didn't believe in it, but we did, and I'm very pleased to report that it's bulging this year. Um, we did have a full grid here, although, uh, as you rightly said, Steve, a bit of a rate of attrition, uh, but we have another busting grid at Donington on the uh, 30th of March and 1st of April. Now it's all looking very good, and this is looking good for the championship as well. There's four riders here fighting it out for the win. Richard Blunt, it is that leads, but Nick Williamson is hungry to move up into first position, and there you can see Richard Blunt just holding off and taking the defensive line. In third there is John Dieterman in the Ducati 860. He's absolutely flying at the moment. And he's just uh, moved up into third place on the Ducati 860. There is Blunt from Williamson. Uh, Lee Reevely, the defending champion, Sid. He's won four Thundersport championships, the most decorated rider in Thundersport history thus far. He said he wanted some co competition. It looks like he's got it. He certainly has got some competition. Um, there's a lot of really good lads that have come into this now. And uh, it's worth pointing out, by the way, uh, that Richard Blunt is there on what is officially now his second bike, his Suzuki. He's got a Kawasaki now, but he hasn't just got the uh, the thing set up right right at the moment. So uh, he's doing really well on a second bike. We are. I fancy him to stay on the Suzuki for a little while longer on this uh, showing. Nick Williamson has just moved ahead of Richard Blunt for now. John Dieterman in the background, meanwhile, on that uh, 
self-made Ducati 860 is catching them rapidly. Uh, it's still Adam Sheriff that leads the 600 Supersport, but there's Williamson, the race leader, on the Honda. Just a bit of a front-end wobble there as they go into McLaren in clear ways, and he runs a bit wide. There's Blunt in second. And look at Dieterman there on that Ducati. Yes, and he's really made that work, hasn't he, Steve? He has, yes. Uh, it's uh, an interesting piece of kit if you get a chance to look at it in the paddock, number 18. But he really is flying here. His lap times, uh, well, he's just put in the fastest lap of the race so far. In fact, no, Rob Wilson has a bit further back. So all sorts of riders finding different points of this race to get to the grip levels up. Rob Wilson is just about in seventh or eighth place. There's defending champion Lee Reevely, and there is number 57, uh, Wilson. Well, I think Lee has finally got his mojo back. I think he's had a difficult weekend this weekend. Um, it's nice to see him up the pointy end again. And I think he'll be fine once he gets used to the fact that he has indeed got all this competition. Yeah, it's also a great championship to have for riders that perhaps were about racing these bikes when they were first new, I suppose, 10 years ago. We've seen a number of riders that have gone for 10-year sabbaticals and have come back just because they've heard about this class. Well, I, I believe they've heard that it's gentleman racing, but uh, it could be a bit of a shock here and there. <laughs> well, there's certainly no gentlemanly way about going around this. Look at this, uh, number six, Williamson is flying. I mean, you would not have predicted Williamson as the front-end contender against some of the competition he's got here. Blunt is closing again. Lee Reevely now has managed to fight his way up into third place. Where has John Dieterman gone? We've lost John Dieterman on the Ducati. I've just noticed there are the two leaders. Yeah, Dieterman's gone down somewhere. So John, who was flying on that Ducati, we were just praising him, commentator's curse. He's out of the running Typical. now. Typical. So Reevely moves up to third. Sheriff in fourth overall is actually leading the 600 Supersport, sponsored by Sparklight Racing. Going around the outside of him now is Chris Norris and then Rob Wilson. There is number 135, John Golding. And he's uh, about to be lapped. There's Lee Reevely and Chris Norris, two riders that have competed together in the Super Twins class a couple of years back. There's uh, Phil Page, number 94. Or Reg Prentice, as he's affectionately known. Reg Prentice, indeed. He's just about to try and catch Don Plain. That's a battle for eighth and ninth. But up towards Druids now, he's trying to actually go around the outside of number 62, Jason Dixon. And Jason was a front-end contender in the race earlier on when the going was a bit tough. Meanwhile, out front, Nick Williamson has got a good lead here against Richard Blunt and Lee Reevely. Further back, Wilson is flying. Rob Wilson has just put in a, a 55 flat, which is... Well, I think it's worth pointing out, Steve, that these times are not so dusty because the GP1 times are very similar. I know it's difficult conditions, but... Uh, Nevertheless, these boys are flying. No, they're just getting to grips with these uh, this older machinery, and it's certainly working out. And this is the final lap, and Williamson's lead, that looked like about a second earlier, has all but gone. There's five riders, look at them. Five or six riders all fighting for the win here on this final lap. And all of a sudden, Nick Williamson, who would you to put your house on winning this race? There's Nicholson, Sam Nicholson going around Druids. I would have put my house on Nick Williamson winning this, and it's all gone to pot. Richard Blunt has taken the lead. Lee Reevely's up there in the mix now as well. Lee Reevely's desperate to get himself on the podium. Williamson fancies another bite at Richard Blunt. Meanwhile, further back, Rob Wilson's in the mix as well, and Chris Norris could even get the win. It's a fight now down to the checkered flag, and Richard Blunt looks like he's got this one nailed, but who's going to get second? It's going to be Lee Reevely, the defending champion that takes second place. Well, how did that happen? Nick Williamson takes third. Rob Wilson fourth, fifth place to Chris Norris, and the top five are split by half a second. <laughs> so, well, you want a good racing, Sid, you've got it. Fantastic. Well, great stuff there. Nick Williamson, I'm pretty sure he'll be quite frustrated with that. He had a 1.2, 1.3 second lead with two laps remaining. And on that final lap, Richard Blunt, well, he found something from somewhere and he's managed to stick his Suzuki, his second bike, we should just point out. Uh, it says Kawasaki on the screen, but pay no attention to that. He has won the race from Lee Reevely, the defending champion, Williamson third out of Wilson, Norris and Sheriff.
And there is a very happy Richard Blunt, centre of pitcher, defending champion on the left, and Nick Williamson on the right. And in the super sport, it's Sheriff, Bob Docker, and Lee Longdon. Winner of the Golden Era Superbikes, Richard Blunt. It must feel brilliant to be back up here on the podium. Oh, it's fantastic. Especially after the weekend I've had so far, this is it. Ending on a real high, so I'm really happy with it. Had some good battles out there. The tyre was starting to go off towards the end, so uh, it was kind of conserving it as best as I could, but it was, it was nice to pip them to the line, so it felt good. And you fought off the reigning champion, Lee Reevely. That must feel good. Yeah, he's had a, a bit of a bad weekend. I was expecting to see him up there, but... Uh, Knowing Lee, he'll bounce back the next one and he'll, he'll be leagues ahead of the rest of us. So, yeah, we'll be watching him for the rest of the season. And any sponsors you'd like to thank? Yeah, massive thanks to Portico Racing or Portico GV for helping us out at Barry St Edmunds and to DV Comms in Coventry, uh, both hopefully helping us for the full year and hopefully get this title. Well done, thank you. Thank you. And winner of the Golden Era Super Sport, Adam, it must feel great to have a trophy in your hands. Tell us about the race. Oh, well, brilliant. Track's best it's been all weekend. It really is. Conditions are perfect now. Really good. Enjoyed it. Best race of the weekend. Last two on you. Excellent to hear. Any sponsors you'd like to thank? Yeah, same again. Richard Andrews, the Motorbike Shop UK. Simon Lane at Hell Performance. We've got Guy at Ni Nitro. Oh, sorry, Held Levers. We've got Nitro Helmets. And who else is there? Silk Clean Oils. And EBC. And. Uh, all the marshals and everybody else for making it happen. Couldn't do it without you all. Really well good. Brilliant weekend. Excellent, thank you. Thank you. Bye.